the momentum and excitement at the time was so great because there was just like this new thing happening and no one could quite pinpoint it, but we knew that we were a part of it. There are some bands that are pretty good every night, and then there are bands that can either be the greatest band in the world or a total fucking train wreck. And Nirvana was kind of one of those bands. I turned on MTV and there we were. Almost like the Beatles, you know? It's like Nirvana mania. What else should I be? I'm always in pain too, and that really adds to the anger in our music. It really does. I'm kind of grateful for it. I got tired of people trying to put too much meaning into my lyrics. People would take it too literally. They think we were being serious because no one sees the funny side of us. So I decided uh, to be really blunt and bold. We repel the mainstream. And see, there's one thing you have to remember about Nirvana is Nirvana didn't go to the mainstream. The mainstream came to Nirvana, and that was our big crisis. <laughs> change our style of music. I want to do something different, and I want to have enough guts to do that. If it alienates people, that's too bad. Good evening. I'm Michael Stipe. I'm here to induct Nirvana into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When an artist offers an idea, a perspective, it helps us all to see who we are. It wakes us up and it pushes us forward towards our collective and individual potential. It makes us, each of us, able to see who we are more clearly. It's progression and progressive movement. It is the future staring us down in the present and saying, come on, let's get on with it. Here we are now. I'm purposely using the word artist rather than musician because the band Nirvana were artists in every sense of the word. It is the highest calling for an artist as well as the greatest possible privilege to capture a moment, to find the zeitgeist, to expose our struggles, our aspirations, our desires, to embrace and define their time. That is my definition of an artist. Nirvana captured lightning in a bottle. And now I will quote Urban Dictionary off the internet in defining lightning in a bottle as capturing something powerful and elusive and then being able to hold it and show it to the world. Kurt Cobain, Chris Novoselic, and Dave Grohl were Nirvana. The potency and the power of their defining moment has become, for us, indelible. Like my band, R.E.M., Nirvana came from a most unlikely place, not a cultural city center like London, San Francisco, Los Angeles, or even New York or Brooklyn, but from Aberdeen, Washington, in the Pacific Northwest, a largely blue-collar town just outside of Seattle. Chris Novoselic said, Nirvana came out of the American hardcore scene 
of the 1980s. This was a true underground. It was punk rock, but the many bands and musical styles were eclectic. We were a product of a community of youth looking for a connection away from the mainstream. Dave Grohl said, we were dropouts, making minimum wage, listening to vinyl, emulating our heroes, Ian Mackay, Little Richard, getting high, sleeping in vans, never expecting the world to notice. <laughs> Solo artists almost have it easier than bands. Bands are not easy. You find yourself in a group of people who rub each other the wrong way in exactly the right way, and you have chemistry, zeitgeist, lightning in a bottle, and a collective voice to help pinpoint a moment to understand what it is that we're going through. Nirvana tapped into a voice that was yearning to be heard. Keep in mind the times. This was the late 80s, early 90s. America, the idea of a hopeful, democratic country had been practically dismantled by Iran-Contra, by AIDS, by the Reagan-Bush senior administrations. But with their music, their attitude, their voice, Nirvana blasted through all that with crystalline nuclear rage and fury. Nirvana were kicking against the system, bringing complete disdain for the music industry and their definition of corporate mainstream America to show a sweet and beautiful but fed up fury coupled with howling vulnerability. Lyrically exposing our frailty, our frustrations, our shortcomings, singing of retreat and acceptance of our triumphs of an outsider community with such immense possibility, stymied or ignored but not held down or held back by the stupidity and political pettiness of the times, they spoke truth and a lot of people listened. They picked up the mantle in that particular battle, but they were singular and loud and melodic and deeply original. And that voice, that voice, Kurt, we miss you. I miss you. Nirvana defined a moment, a movement for outsiders, for the fags and the fat girls and the broken toys and the shy nerds and the goth kids from Tennessee and Kentucky, for the rockers and the awkward and the fed up and the two smart kids and the bullied. We were a community, a generation, in Nirvana's case, several generations. And the echo chamber of that collective howl and Allen Ginsberg would have been very proud here. That moment and that voice reverberated into music and film, into politics, into worldview, and so many fields in so many ways and in our lives. And this is not just pop music. This is something much greater than that. These are a few artists who rubbed each other the wrong way in exactly the right way at the right time. Nirvana, it is my honor to call to the stage Chris Novoselic and Dave Grohl. I was the quiet one in Nirvana. I was the drummer. But most of you don't know that I was the fifth drummer of Nirvana. For whatever reason, I got to be the luckiest person in the world and also be in Nirvana. But I have to give credit to all of the other drummers that came before me. Aaron Burkhart, thank you very much. Dale Crover from the Melvins, who is my absolute drumming hero. Dan Peters from Mud Honey. Chad Channing, who is the drummer of Nirvana. 
guess what Chad's responsible for? If you listen to a song like In Bloom, the that's Chad. We came from this underground punk rock scene where there really were no awards or ceremonies or trophies. It was all about doing it for real, and the reward was doing it right and sharing the community of music, helping other musicians and inspiring people. And so I got really lucky to grow up in the Washington, D.C. punk rock scene where I was inspired by all of these amazing people. Too many to list. I'm also lucky that when we first started out, we didn't know anything about business. We were in a fucking van, you know, buying corn dogs from T-shirts that we had sold. And we were lucky that we met a manager named John Silva, and we met an accountant named Lee Johnson. And I'm happy to say that I've never, ever strayed from those two people in my life. That's like 25 years. John Cutcliffe and Michael Meisel and... I mean, it's a long list of people that I'm gonna forget most of them, but... Most of all, I have to thank my family because... I was lucky enough to grow up in a musical family in an environment that encouraged music. Parents that never told me not to listen to fucking Slayer. You know what I mean? I listened to some really, really fucked up shit. But my parents never told me not to because I was finding myself. So, Mom, thanks. Thanks for letting me drop out of high school. <laughs> Kids, stay in school, don't do drugs. It's a bad idea. I have to thank my beautiful wife, Jordan, and my two daughters that I hope grow up to inspire people just like every musician I grew up inspired by. Because I think that's the deal, is that you look up to your heroes and you shouldn't be intimidated by them. You should be inspired by them. Don't look at the poster on your wall and think, fuck, I could never do that. Look at the poster on the wall and think, fuck, I'm gonna do that. And then you do this. Thank you, Michael, for that uh, great induction and uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I want to thank all the Nirvana fans who... Nirvana fans walk up to me every day and say thank you for the music. And when I hear, when I hear that, and that reminds me of Kurt Cobain, okay? So I want to say thank you, Kurt Cobain. And I wish Kurt was here tonight, okay? And that music means so much to so many people. And, it's, and there's new generations and new fans coming up. And it's really powerful. And Kurt was, a, was an intense artist. And uh, he really connected with a lot of people. And, uh, I wanna th and when Nirvana, we, did our, we started in Aberdeen, Washington, in, in Washington State. And uh, we had an infrastructure there to support us. There was a music community. I want to thank Sub Pop Records. Um, the music community in Seattle and Washington State. I want to thank Buzz Osborne. Thank you, Buzz, for turning us on to punk rock music. Steve Albini. And Butch Vig for recording us twice. Thank you, Susan Silver, for uh, introducing us to the music industry properly. And uh, thank you all again. I'm probably gonna cry. I'm already crying. Because he'd be so proud. He'd say he wasn't, but he would be. I just miss him so much. 
He was such an angel. Thank you. You know, I have a big speech, but I'm not going to say it. Hi. We all start bands when we're kids. And this is my family I'm looking at right now, all of you. Brother Michael, Brother Chris, Grandma Wendy, Mr. Grohl. Come up, David and Chris. That's it. I just wish that Kurt was here to he feel this and be this. 20 years ago, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame maybe wasn't, but tonight he really would have appreciated it. He would appreciate it. Chris and Dave and Michael and his mother and his sisters being here. And I just want to give this to Frances, our daughter, who's not here because she's ill. That's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you so very much, Jan and the committee. We're going to have a, a few ladies joining us tonight. So here is a lady who I can't believe is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, who should be. Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Jett.
We have somebody from Sonic Youth here. Kim Gordon. We have uh, another artist who's going to join us tonight. She's the singer in the band St. Vincent. She lives here in Brooklyn. Her name is Annie Clark. Annie.
I want to thank that I don't know if anyone's really thank yet. Pat Smear, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Pat. Pat, I love you so much. No, you don't love me more. We're going to wrap it up with this number. So again, thanks, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen, Lord.
accepting all I've done and said I want to stand and stare again Till there's nothing left out Oh, 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 oh it remains there in your eyes Whatever comes and goes 